Last night I returned from the second of three trips to Chicago to teach graduate students at a seminary. And the topic this week was on baptism, which is incredibly timely for today's gospel. Jesus uses the word baptism in Mark's gospel in a new way, in a way that had never been used before. People understood baptism for the cleansing of their sins. It was something that they did on a regular basis. John the baptizer showed up at places where people already were washing themselves for the forgiveness of their sins. He didn't draw the crowd. He used the crowd that was there, and then word spread and the crowd became bigger. You see, what you had to do when you offered your gift at the temple was that you needed to purify yourself before you came before the Lord. And the best way to purify yourself was in living water, flowing water, moving water. So you would make a journey from Jerusalem down a very narrow mountain path road with a steep cliff and caves on one side and a sheer cliff to a valley below on the other. It's the setting of Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan. People who have money and possessions who are going to give those to the temple going down this narrow road to cleanse themselves in the Jordan River and come back. It's a perfect place for robbers. There's no place to escape. So Jesus sets the story of this Samaritan healing and taking care of a man who is beaten along the road. It also explains to us why nobody wanted to stop, because you'd have to make the trip all the way back to the Jordan River again, because to touch somebody who had been beaten and bloody would be to make you unclean. If you couldn't get to living water, then still water was acceptable. And outside of the temple were these big pools that you could immerse yourself in called mikvahs for purification. One of the delightful things about my trip to Chicago this time was that on Friday night, the local mosque used the facilities of the seminary for their youth group and for their Christian formation, except it would be Islamic formation, and for prayer. The whole place was filled with laughing, children running around, doing all sorts of things that children do of whatever culture. But the big surprise was what was going on in the men's room. Boys and teenagers of all ages trying to figure out how to cleanse themselves. In Islamic tradition, you wash your face, you wash your hands, you wash your feet before you pray. So a whole bathroom full of giggly, bustling boys, washing faces, washing hands, and figuring out how to get their feet up into the sink to wash them as well. But Jesus takes it in a completely different direction. He was asked, we want to sit at your right and left hand because you're going places, Jesus. And we want to go places with you. You're going to be important. You're going to be popular. You're going to have authority. We want to be your right hand and left hand man. Can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink? Can you, can you undergo the baptism that I am undergoing? Yep, we can do that. Well, I can't grant you the seat because that's not mine to give, but you will take my cup and you will undergo my baptism. These words forever change the concept of baptism from the cleansing that John the Baptist did to something far deeper. You see, Jesus knew what was in store for him. Maybe not the details, but he knew the arc of his life. Anyone who reads Hebrew scriptures would know that arc. 
Human beings are sinful, broken, and selfish and want the world to revolve around us. And God sends prophets to his people over and over again to say, love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. But those commandments bind and pinch our own desires to do the things that we want to do, to say what we want to say, to go where we want to go, to spend our resources how we want to spend them. And so throughout history, the people of God, when the prophets came, ignored them or beat them or killed them. Jesus understands that to follow God is to die to yourself, to die to what your dreams are, what your hopes are, what your ambitions are, what your values are, and to take God's dreams, hopes, ambitions, and values for you. I believe I can say with absolute certainty that Jesus didn't wake up one day and say, you know, the thing I want to do more than anything else is to go to Jerusalem so somebody can whip me to a bloody pulp, nail me to a cross, and let me die. I don't think that's what Jesus, in his earthly sense, would want to do. But he understood that his life was not about his desires, but his life was about doing what the God who created him wanted him to do. If we believe that God loves us, and if we believe that God knows us, every hair on our head, and knows even who we were when we were in our mother's womb, then do we not believe that this God who loves us, who created us, who knows every bit about us, don't we believe that God knows how we can best live and work and move God has a plan. But for us to live in that plan, for us to realize the dream of who we are really called to be, then we must endure Jesus' baptism, which is we must die with Jesus in that water and rise again. You see, if I had followed my dream, I would never know you. My dream was to be a surgeon. It was a passion that was so deeply held in my heart and in my being that I could never imagine being anything else. But had I followed my dream, I would have never met my wife Clifford, and the children that I love, Miles, Mitchell, and Claire, would not exist. I had never heard of Portsmouth, Virginia. <laughs> and I certainly had never heard of St. John's Church. And the journey of giving up and of dying to those dreams and those hopes is not an easy one. And there is suffering along the way. But in my amazement, I look out and I say, how could I have been anything but this? For you have incredibly blessed me beyond my wildest imagination. God calls us through Jesus to drink his cup to endure his baptism, to die to who we are so that we may rise to who we really are, who we really are called to be, how we're really called to live. Are you willing to each and every day drink Jesus' cup to endure his baptism, to die to you and to become who God really wants you to be.